This is the Obsvot Tailair, a camera designed for live streaming and recording from anywhere. Features 4K resolution, AI tracking, and a number of outputs including HDMI and NDI support, making it a very versatile camera that can be inserted into almost any production setup. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how I've been using it and how it stacks up to the big boys. Let's get into it. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. In this video, we're taking a look at the Obspot Tailair. A full disclosure, Obspot did reach out to me and ask me if I'd like to review this camera. They did provide me with the camera and some extra accessories free of charge. Although they did give me some suggested talking points, all my opinions in this video are my own. As I mentioned in the intro, the, this camera is designed for live streaming and recorded content in a pretty portable and compact package. Now this is going to be a bit longer video mainly because there's so much to talk about in this camera. So here are the different sections in this video. Uh, feel free to jump to any of the sections using the timestamps here. The Osmond Tail Air has a 1 over 1.8 inch CMOS sensor, an aperture of f1.8, and an ISO range of 100 to 6400, making a very good low light performer. It does have a 4x digital zoom, and this is not an optical zoom like traditional PTZ cameras have. As far as recording resolution is concerned, you can record up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Now, if you need to shoot at 60 frames per second, you need to go down to 1080p as well. This does have two built-in microphones, and it, have, it does have a 3.5 millimeter jack, microphone jack that supports mic in and line in. Now, those microphones are pretty good, uh, it does support noise cancellation or has a little bit of noise cancellation processing in there. But if I were you, I would try to use an external microphone. This has a built-in battery that lasts about two and a half hours when recording at 1080p, but this will significantly be lower if you shoot at 4K. It does take 90 minutes to charge up all the way up. Uh, you can charge the camera via the USB-C port. It does come with a three foot USB-C port for both charging and UVC or webcam output. As far as communicating with the Osvat Tail Air, the main way to communicate it with it is through the mobile app. Now it uses both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Now Bluetooth is really main, mainly to communicate with the Osvat to put it in the right Wi-Fi mode. So there are two Wi-Fi modes. You connect it to an existing Wi-Fi network like I have here in my home network, or you can connect to the Tail Air's hotspot now this is especially good if you're on the go and you want to go live you want to stream live or you want to just control the hotspot from your phone but you can go live via your uh, mobile phone's cellular data now when you're on the app immediately you'll see a preview and you're seeing a lot of me right here you have main output that i'm showing on screen but on the app itself you have two screens you have the top right which is should match this output and then you have this main screen, which shows what the Ozbot can see. But we pretty much control everything through this app. Now we can do pan and tilt really easily by long pressing on any part of the screen. And now we can kind of pan and tilt here, right? The other way we can control the pan and tilt is through the gimbal and view tab here. And we're given a joystick here and I can just move around the joystick now. I can press on those little arrows to do the same thing. We can control the speed of the pan and tilt there. On the right side, it, we do have the digital zoom. So if I zoom in, you'll see that the output in the top right window has changed. But now we have the little red outline box that shows us where we're cropping in or zooming in digitally. And I can kind of change my framing here a little bit or using the joystick. Because this camera is 4K and especially if we output at 1080p, if we do crop in, we should have very little quality loss when we do crop in. So one of the things that we can do is if we go to the crop feature here, which is right next to that gimbal and view tab, is if we pinch in with two fingers, you'll see that we're cropping into our picture and the output is cropping in at the same time. And then we can change kind of where that framing is. 
Now, this could be used as digital PTZ, but I think this is really mainly to kind of dial in your framing here. Uh, but although you can pan from side to side, it does it pretty smoothly. But this is really meant to kind of dial in your framing when you have when you have your shot. Of course, this is not doing the physical pan and tilt, but this is one cool feature to kind of really dial in your picture, especially if I wanted to make sure I have plenty of headroom on or enough or not too much headroom when I'm on a Zoom call. So I could just kind of dial in here and make sure I'm kind of centered in that frame. One of the great things about this camera is the ability to adjust the picture quality using a lot of manual controls. So if we go into the app, we're going to tap on the adjustment panel here on the left side, which is the middle icon. And there's a number of ways to adjust our exposure. I can tap on the screen to pick an object or area I want to expose for, let's say my face. And just like the iPhone camera app, we can, we can move around that little icon there, the sun icon and adjust our exposure compensation that way as well. You can also tap on the EV button on the left side there to kind of dial in the number that we want as far as exposure compensation. The other way to do this is to take it out of auto mode, put it into manual mode, and here we can adjust the ISO, put it down there, and the shutter speed. Now we can't adjust the aperture because I believe it's at a fixed 1.8 aperture, so there's no adjustments to the aperture itself. Along with changing exposure, we can also change the white balance. Right now it's on auto white balance. There's these different modes. There are typical modes for the white balance, but we can also do the custom white balance and change the color temperature here. But I'll put it back to auto. Now along with that, we can change the style here. If we put it to standard, then we can It'll just put everything as flat as possible or just kind of the baseline. But if we go into custom, we can dial in their sharpness, contrast, saturation, hue, and brightness. So I actually do this a lot. And here's kind of an example of how I did some adjustments for uh, kind of a different scenario. Of course, the standout feature of this camera, or at least the first thing they really want you to know about this camera, is that it is an AI-powered camera. This does have excellent AI auto tracking that can track humans, pets, and even objects. Now, it locks onto the subject even as it goes behind, if that subject goes behind another object or through complex backgrounds. Now, there are a number of ways to set this uh, auto tracking. You can set it through the app by double tapping on a subject that you're trying to track. You can go into the AI mode and draw a box around the subject. The easiest way to start the tracking is through a number of gestures. And this does support a number of gestures. So you can do hands up to hands up to activate and deactivate the tracking. You can do one L to zoom in. I believe it zooms in to two X by default. Then you can do two L's to do more refined zooms. Then the last one is you can do an OK sign to start recording. So yes, of course, you can disable all these gestures in the app, which is very important because sometimes you do accidentally activate the tracking or do a zoom in just by accident, just by going with an L. But back to the tracking, they thought of a few clever things that you'll find in the AI section of the app. You can actually set the tracking speed. So depending on the subject that you're trying to track, you can uh, set that speed. One other awesome feature that I found though is how you can set up the framing of the object. So by default, it's tracking the subject and it's putting it right in the middle of the frame with the proper headroom on top. But you can also move the subject to the left or the right of the frame as well. So if I need the subject to be on the left, of the frame while there's bullet points going on the right of the frame. You can do that and set that and you can still have the AI tracking. So the, the AI tracking is really easy to set. Another AI feature is the director's grid. Now this feature automatically creates different scenes such as a wide and close up shot depending on what's in the frame. You can switch between those different scenes very easily. Now it gets more interesting is 
when you have more than one subject in your shot or your frame, it creates a different scene with those different subjects. Think of an interview where you're going back and forth between two people. Now, the only thing I don't like is when you're doing transitions between the two, I think it only can do jump cuts, uh, like an immediate cut. There's no option that I can see that can do a fade transition between the two subjects. So along with being able to record to a micro SD card up to 512 gigabytes, there are a number of ways that you can use the tail air. First, you can use it in UVC mode, which is stands for USB video class. This is really just to use it as a webcam. And you can bring this into your program such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and even OBS, any program that can take in a webcam. This of course connects via the USB-C cable and it charges the camera while you're using it as a webcam. Then you can use the HDMI port. It's a micro HDMI port, which I do love the fact that this does have HDMI output because I could bring it into my video switchers such as the ATM Mini Pro or the recently reviewed OC GoStream Deck. It outputs at 1080p and 4K. Another way you can use it is uh, with NDI. This does support NDI, which stands for Network Device Interface. Now this is made by a company called NewTek. The standard is made by them. And so you, have, you can output at 4K, 1080p, 720p. And I'm happy to say that a program like OBS does support uh, NDI. Now you do need to purchase an additional NDI license on their website, which they did provide to me for this review. And then you can connect via, uh, via Wi-Fi wirelessly or connect via the uh, optional accessory of the USB-C to network adapter, which they did provide me also for this review. I would highly recommend doing it via uh, the USB-C network adapter it's always better to have a direct connection, but this actually did pretty well uh, wirelessly. You just need to be pretty close to your Wi-Fi router or Wi-Fi access point because there are there is a little bit of latency. Now this supports NDI HX3 and not HX or regular NDI. Now this is important because HX3 is their newer standard. It's high quality video with low latency. Now I have, I have a device that supports HX, but I wasn't able to bring it in uh, to that device because it doesn't support HX3. So that's important to know. Then you have RTMP, which really is for different streaming services. Now you, it does have different streaming services already built in, but if there is a uh, streaming service that's not supported, you can just uh, put in the RTMP server in there. And lastly, it does support RTSP, basically, you can go, when you turn that on, you can go to the camera, uh, the address of the camera directly and pull in the feed via RTSP over the network. The Tel Air is a very versatile camera with a lot of different features geared towards those who are doing live streaming. And because of the different output option, it's a camera that can be used in so many different scenarios. So I'm gonna run through right now the different ways I've been using the camera and the different ways I will be using the camera. First, of course, is live streaming. I can use it via U UVC or webcam mode. I can use the HDMI output into my ATEM Mini Pro, or I can use the NDI directly into OBS. Now, unfortunately, the GoStream switcher that I recently reviewed supports only NDI HX and not HX3, so I can't bring this camera in directly via NDI. I can still use it with HDMI, but I wish it supported NDI directly into that switcher. Now I can use the tail air as my main camera or a behind the scenes camera like I'm doing now in this video. Now you can see this camera being really awesome for presentations. So I'm thinking of teachers, uh, especially with the AI tracking. Uh, I'll be using this for different uh, church conferences. We'll have different speakers on the stage and they tend to move around a little bit. So having that AI tracking feature is really awesome. And in order for you to go live though, you'll need your a device to initiate the streaming. Uh, you can use your cell phone, cell phone's data to go live, but you'll still need a device to go streaming. There's no gesture or button on the go stream to help you go live. And then the second way I've been, I'll be using, and I have been using this camera is for these YouTube videos. 
I, I've been using it either as my main camera or as a secondary camera. Now I can use a secondary camera for a different angle for a multi-camera setup, or I can use it for my B-roll shots. And having it for my B-roll shots has been really awesome, especially for products. I can do this kind of smooth panning with the uh, for my B-roll shots using the pan, tilt, zoom functions on this camera. So one feature I really hope Obspot really adds into the app is the ability to control the speed of the different points you can set in the app. So what I'm talking about is in the app, you can set different points to pan to. You can set it as, you can do up to three presets, but unfortunately it just does a really quick pan to those different shots. So I wish we could control the pan speed of going from point A to B. So I really wanna set point A and B and do a smooth pan of a product shot. So that would be a really awesome feature they could add in. What do I think of the Tail Air from Ozbot? I think it's a very awesome camera. Now, at a $499, it may not be the right camera for everybody, especially at that price point. But if you're one that does a lot of live presentations, live streaming, not only to YouTube, but also if you're doing live presentations on Teams or Zoom, this is the right camera for you. It's a very versatile camera, especially if you're on the go. You could take it on the go with you. It's a very compact camera. Now, if you're one that does content creation, recorded content, this might be a tool for you as well. I'm, I'm using this for a lot of B-roll shots, a lot of different angled shots. This is a very versatile camera. And if you're doing live events, I would really consider getting this camera. You can put place this camera in different spots where you can't a bigger camera. And it, with the different options for connecting, it's very versatile to connect to OBS and other camera switchers as well. Thanks to Obsabot for sending this out. I'm really considering getting a few more of these cameras and adding it to my arsenal, especially if I am starting to do a little bit more live events such as weddings and church events. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.